Today, with our viewers, we would like to discuss the book with Sister Anila today and what was happening in her life or what she would like to talk about. And also, I would like all the viewers to call in and ask questions or if they've got any comments, inshallah, we will be speaking to Sister Anila. So now, I would like to introduce Sister Anila today. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Anila. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, thank you, first of all, for coming to the Alibaba Studios in Manchester. No problem. And uh, I would like to thank you from myself and all the Alibaba team uh, for coming today. And I know it's a very, very uh, big step for you to come onto the TV. And I would like to thank your family as well for letting you come on thank today, you, mashallah. Brother. So, first of all, sister, because obviously uh, a lot of people have probably not heard about your book. Yeah. And uh, they've probably not seen you on TV before because this is the first time you've come on the TV. So first of all, we'd like to introduce yourself, tell the viewers about yourself, what you've been doing in the past, uh, what you've been doing studying-wise and what you've done career-wise as well, please. Well, in the past, obviously, I've been grown up in a very, very traditional Sunni household okay. where my father taught me Islam. Mm -hmm. um, like in my introduction, I've mentioned that he used to, we used to go to the mosque yeah. when I was a kid, when I was about eight years old, I used to go to the mosque straight after school Mashallah. and I used to learn the Quran, I'd come home and learn how to read Salah from my father. Mashallah. Then after that, obviously I studied mm -hmm. and I studied chemistry at Liverpool right. University. Right, um, and then obviously after my studies, I enrolled in a, a, a job and, mm -hmm. and my current occupation is very much related to the work mm -hmm. I I did within my degree, you know, right. what I actually studied in my degree. So I'm actually now I'm a pharmaceutical stroke mm -hmm. chemical quality control analyst. So Mashallah. Mashallah. I'm actually now working for quite a major company. Um, and so that is a big part of my life. Mashallah. As is this Mashallah. a that's big part good. of my life. So and that's basically that's where I'm coming from. So yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. like you said, I, mm -hmm. I am following now the Ahlul Bayt. Um, mm -hmm. I'm well, if people want to call me Shia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely, Mashallah, sister. Uh, yeah. So, Mashallah, you've come from a very professional background, then, Mashallah, you've done your studies and everything. You've been brought up in this country. So uh, that's a very, very good example, I feel, for the youngsters out there, that if you're brought up in this country, there's a lot of uh, books there we can do research on. We've got the internet now. So what I would like to ask you, sister, is that the change that you've had from being a Shia Muslim, yeah. I mean, uh, from being a Sunni Muslim to being a, Sh a Shia Muslim as you are now, uh, what was it that really started it off, the, you know, the first thing well, that really got you going into... Well, obviously, mm -hmm. what it was was wanting to gain more knowledge in Islam. Mm -hmm. So because I wanted to gain more knowledge in Islam, yeah. I actually bought a book. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, my father gave me the book, mm -hmm. and it's a book that the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah highly right. recommend in Tabli, mm -hmm. and it's called Fazail Amal. Um, mm -hmm. and that book itself taught me a lot about the Sahaba. Right. It taught me a lot about... Um, Zikr, yeah. um, and so I really got into the mm -hmm. knowledge on the Sahaba. So as I've mentioned in my introduction, mm -hmm. I speak about um, a lot of focus that was on yeah. the Sahaba. So I right. just speak about it to my father, like I've mm -hmm. mentioned in my introduction, I speak about Abu Bakr, Hazrat Abu Bakr, I speak about, um, mm -hmm. you know, Khalid ibn Avali, different certain Sahabi that were coming across in my mind. Yeah. But like I've mentioned in my introduction, the word Ahlul Bayt never came, uh, I never came across the word Ahlul Bayt right. until... So you were into uh, religion, uh, sister, at a very young age, as you yeah. mentioned, when you were eight years old, you used to go to the mosque. Yeah. So obviously you found out a lot about religion, but when did you actually uh, start knowing about the Shia religion? Well, it all started when I mm. actually clicked on uh, a discussion on a certain website. Right. And on that website was a discussion in regards to the leadership of Abu Bakr, Hazrat Abu Bakr, and Imam Ali al Islam. And obvious, obviously, because I come from a Sunni background, we have books where they teach you about Hazrat Abu Bakr and his status amongst the Muslims mm. and him being the first caliph. So obviously that was in my head. And at that time, I had no knowledge of anything to do with Ahlul Bayt. I had no knowledge to do with um, the leadership yeah. of Ahlul Bayt or the leadership of Imam Ali al -Islam. So when this came into the picture, mm. I started to question because it was something that was new to me, you yeah. know, and because of that, like I've mentioned in my introduction, mm. my mind started, I started to jump cartwheels, you know, and yeah. I wanted to progress this further because I'm the type of person that wants to 
go further and mm. find out, and then I can, my mind will be at rest. Yeah, so there yeah. wasn't any family members who were Shias, or there weren't any family no, or I've got friends no family or relatives? Members. All my family, they're all Ahlul Sunnah. Right. They're all part of the Ahlul Sunnah. I'm the only Shia. Well, at, at the moment, mm. the sister, she's changed, mashallah, mm. but majority of my family, they're all, they're all um, Ahlul Sunnah. Right. Yeah. So how many years ago was this when you actually got into the internet and started it doing the research? It was about six, seven years ago. About seven years yeah. ago, mashallah. Yeah. That's very good. So, Sister, what we're uh, going to discuss today with the viewers, and I would like to viewers, um, you know, to call in if they've got any comments or questions about the book, inshallah, is uh, the book is a great uh, achievement, mashallah, for someone to be uh, so young as you are, mashallah, and write such a big book, uh, The Succession of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What actually started the book off? You know, which, um, you know, who were you trying to address or what really gave you the signal to write such a great book, mashallah? What happened is, at the time of my change, mm -hmm. I couldn't actually address the issue to my own family. Right. And my family are very dear to me, brother. Mm -hmm. And trying to address that issue and not being able to address it mm -hmm. basically enforced me to write. Right. So I started writing articles. Mm -hmm. I started writing articles. It was actually at work in right. my dinner hour where mm -hmm. I started writing these articles, mm -hmm. coming home, typing them up, and then, you know, and then it progressed further. And then after that, I thought, well, this is turning into a book. Mashallah. So mashallah. then I thought, why do not? I start writing a book and there's, I know there are other people who may be going through the same situation mm -hmm. who are not being able to address this issue to the family um, and it will actually be an aid for them and that's and then obviously the books there as you can see yeah mashallah. You know. so it, at that time you weren't thinking of uh, actually writing the book you were just thinking about your family that you can pass yeah. on the information, information to, to them yeah. so they can read about yeah. it and then what sources have you used in the past? And like you said, it took you about seven years to yeah. write the book and everything, about seven years you started off. So what sources have you used you know, in your book? I've used mainly the leading Sunni, Ahlul Sunnah mm -hmm. sources, which are the Say mm -hmm. Sitta. I actually purchased the Say Sitta myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Abu, I used Abu Hanifa's book as well because my father gave me that book mm -hmm. because my dad was a Hanafi, he's yeah. a Hanafi. Mm -hmm. um, so I have that book, I use that as a source, and that source is, I have mentioned it in the book. Mashallah. It's in the book. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously there was um, other sources like Dari Kal Tabari, mm -hmm. and I know friends who have Dari Kal Tabari, so I can relate from that. Um, so, right. you know, so they are the leading sources. So you've sources. got all the information yeah, really in your yeah. book. I mean, like so these when books, viewers, yeah, yeah. yeah. These, these are, mm -hmm. this is my own copy, and mm -hmm. this is... Jamia Tirmidhi, then you've got Sahih Muslim, Sahih yeah. Bukhari. So I have these books and I have these references, mm -hmm. and they are quoted. They're all in, in the, the book. book. So yeah, when the uh, book. our viewers, when they read the book, yeah. everything's mentioned in the book where they can get the references from, and it's all mentioned yeah. there, mashallah. So we'll move on to the book now, sister. Do you know, reading the book, mashallah, I've read it myself, and uh, it's a very good book, mashallah. I've read you know, the information that's there in many, many other books, so it's a very, very good book. But what I would like to ask you now is, um, you know, about your book uh, that you've mentioned, the Khilafah and the Imams. Yeah. So the first thing that really um, causes the difference between the Shia Muslim and the Sunni Muslim is that after the demise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, there were the, obviously the followers of Hazrat Abu Bakr and also uh, the followers of Hazrat Ali. So there were two followers there, you know, the group of uh, Shias and the group of Sh Sunnis. So that's where the main difference really started off. Obviously, we have many differences, that, as we have in the book, you know, you've mentioned. But the main difference is when we had the demise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what have you said in your book? You, can well, you tell the viewers, you know, the difference really of the thinking of the Khilafa, you know, the Khalifa between the Shia and the Sunni? What would you like to say that, uh, about that? Well, obviously, the biggest difference between the Ahlul Sunnah mm -hmm. and the Shia is that the they the Shia believe that the Caliphate is given by Allah Subhanahu mm -hmm. Wa Taala, and the Sunnah they believe it's actually nomination. nominated. So therefore, but, we yeah. have um, Imam Ali alayhi salam, who we believe yeah, was nominated by yeah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala himself. And yeah, we and have, the, yeah. yeah, obviously, but my my own thinking mm -hmm. and my own research mm -hmm. and the way my mind thought about it. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about um, the mm -hmm. Musa alayhi salam and he says to his brother, 
وقال موسى أخي هارون أخلفني في قومي وأسلي ولا تتبي إن سبيل المفسدين take my place amongst the people and be of the righteous and do do not follow the way of the mischief makers and when I think of Nabi Musa alayhi salam and he speaks about to his brother saying you take my place mm -hmm. so he's saying you take my place when Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he's talking about a caliph mm -hmm. uh, when he speaks about the caliph and he tells you about the caliph mm -hmm. what does he mean he means somebody to take his place Absolutely. somebody who's going to take his place has to be of the asli mm -hmm. has to be of the righteous yeah. he cannot be outside of mm -hmm. that and the thing is within the Quran itself and I've quoted this verse 24 55 yeah. Surah yeah. Nur, I mm -hmm. think it is um, you know Allah says what are the آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم. He says, you know, we, you know, if those of you who believe from amongst you and those who are of the righteous, we will grant the khilafat as we granted the khilafat of those before you. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is telling you that we will grant the khilafat. And in Sahih Bukhari, which is, I think it's this one, volume, volume eight or volume nine. I have, I mean the. The actual quote yeah. is in here, yeah. but in there I found that in there it speaks about Prophet Muhammad. He says Abu Sayyid al Khudri narrates this, and he says Ma ba asulahu min nabiin wa lasta khalifa min khalifatin. He says Allah never sends a nabi or gives the caliphate to a caliph except that he has two groups of advisers. Mm -hmm. Those that one group exhorts him to do good, and the other group exhorts him to do evil so in this tradition Allah has said um, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he is saying Allah never gives the prophethood uh, or give, obviously sends a prophet or gives the uh, caliphate mm -hmm. to a caliph so he, Allah is giving the ca caliphate to a caliph this is in Sahih Bukhari Mashallah. the Quran itself dictates to me mm -hmm. that a caliph is somebody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses and not it's not for the nomination of the people because a person who's chosen it may be someone who could be someone who could move towards misdeeds yeah. now yeah. with the Ahl al-Sunnah you have Khulafa mm -hmm. and Khulafa Rashidun, Rashidun. you've mentioned so you, that system yeah, I have. Oh, you just like to show the book to our viewers it's called the uh, succession of the Prophet Muhammad peace, peace be upon him and is written by our sister over here, Anila Sultan. So, mashallah, we'll, co uh, we'll continue with that discussion, sister. So, you were saying about um, the Khulafa and the, the Khulafa yeah, Rashidun. The, the, yeah, the Khulafa and the mm. Khulafa Rashidun. Whereas, in my eyes, the way I see it, mm. a Khalif has to be of the righteous. He is. He has to be salih, mm -hmm. uh, like in the Quran, Ya Dawood, you know, when Allah speaks about to Nabi Dawood, yeah. you yeah. know, Inna khalifatan fil ard, fahkum mm -hmm. nas bil haqqi wa la al hawa. Mm -hmm. Follow not, Allah says, we have made you a khalifa on earth, mm -hmm. so judge people in truth, but follow not the desires of the people, not, or follow not your vain desires. Mm -hmm. or, if you follow other, other people's desires, or you follow your, your own desires, obviously you're going outside of what a caliph is. Now to me, a khulafa, has to have everything within has to conduct within the boundaries of absolutely, islam absolutely. so when i i mean obviously in my book i've mm. quoted um i've quoted a, 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 a such a person yazid i mean yeah. yazid has been yeah. spoken of a lot on this channel mm -hmm. and yazid obviously ibn kathir in his al-bidaya wa al nihaya in mm -hmm. volume eight of his of this book mm -hmm. he states that yazid obviously had a tendency to drink yeah um, but obviously things that, that were things forbidden that were in forbidden Islam. in Islam. Yeah, now yeah. these things makes a person not of the righteous. It Absolutely. makes a person outside of that. But mm -hmm. how can you split for the Quran to teach me that the Khulafa is of the righteous? Mm -hmm. How can you mark a split between the two? Yeah. How can you say Khulafa Rashid and mm -hmm. how can you say Khulafa? You know, and then you've got the the traditions to do with the Khulafa. Mm -hmm. You've got um after me, there's going to, you know, the, you know, the 12 imams. 12 imams. Yeah, from the, so you've got the yeah. 12 caliphs and the 12 mm -hmm. imams. Sahih Muslim, he mm -hmm. quotes 12 caliphs. Mm -hmm. um, and khalifatan, um, and then you have in uh, Sahih Bukhari, he quotes the word Amir. Yeah. So these two things are the same. So the person who's taking the place of Rasul, he's saying the, these 12 people are going to take my place. These 12 people are, are the Amir. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And then, Obviously, you've got the imam as well, where the imams in question are people mm -hmm. speak about. The imam is separate to the, the caliph. We have 
certain groups or denominations within the Ahlul Sunnah mm -hmm. who speak about the um, Imam and the, the Caliph being two different things. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, in Sahih al Bukhari, in the book of, it's volume three, the manu, it's called, the, I think it's the Monument Mission of Slaves. Yeah. Yeah. In there, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, he says, Fa imamun ra'in wa mas'ulan an ra'iyatihi. He said, The imam is a guardian mm -hmm. and he is responsible for the people, he's responsible for his, his charges. Or yeah. Then yeah. the same narration by Abdullah ibn Umar mm -hmm. states that Fa amir al lazi al nas ra'in wa mas'ulan an ra'iyatihi. The amir amongst the people mm -hmm. is, amir is, amongst the people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. Abdullah ibn Umar, this is a narration. Yeah. Here you have the amir and the imam, and they're both the same thing. Mm -hmm. They are, they are quoted in Bukhari and it is teaching me as a person it's teaching me that it is the same thing it's not anything different yeah so the Amir and the Imam are you know essentially the same thing absolutely sister mashallah and uh, the viewers uh, that are watching they can mashallah read the book because at the moment sister is only mentioning some of the yeah. things that but in very very briefly so the viewers can get this book and mashallah read it Inshallah. So, sister, reading your introduction, really, you know, you've mentioned the event of Gadir. That was a very, very important uh, event uh, that you've mentioned. You know, that was really a starting point as well that you mentioned the event of Gadir. So, what have you said about that in your book? You know, would like I've to tell the viewers. I've quoted the narrations yeah. to mm -hmm. do with Gadir, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, the leading authority, like you have Sahih Muslim, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Well, Bukhari himself hasn't quoted the tradition, but he has quoted it in his Tariq al right. But We have two, we have two ways uh, of of this tradition. You have Hadith al takalain and you have to do with Mankun Tamola Fa'ali Mola, which everybody knows about. But the thing is, within uh, Sunan al Kubra An Nisa'i, he quotes both these things together. Mm. That these that's a very stated, important uh, point, yeah. sister. That. Uh, we believe that Munkuntum Mola Fahaza Alin Mola, this is a point when, uh, as you've uh, mentioned in your book, that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said that after me, Imam Ali al Islam is my Imam, he's a yeah. Khalifa, he's the one who's going to be after me, he's going to be the leader yeah. after me. And uh, that's where really the difference is between the Shias and the Sunnis. So, how can you really explain to the viewers you know, what would you like to say about that from your book? Well, after me. Mm -hmm. When you think of Ghadir and you think of tradition of Ghadir, mm -hmm. uh, when I've just quoted to yeah. you Sunan al Kubra, mm -hmm. which is an Nisa'i Sunan al Kubra, and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says, In the Tariq fi kun takhalayn, mm -hmm. kitabullah wa ahlul bayt, fanzur, mm -hmm. kayfa takhalafuni. Watch how you treat these two mm -hmm. after me. He says, I've left, I left the Mongshu, the Quran, and Ahlul Bayt. So, mm -hmm. watch, how you, watch how you treat these two after me. Fahuma, for these two. Mm -hmm. hatta yeah. These two will not separate mm -hmm. until they come to me uh, at the pool. Yeah. But the thing is, when, when, when I think of this, and then I think straight after that, Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad, he speaks about saying, Allah is mawla, my Mawlaya. Absolutely. And then he says, mm -hmm. to me, uh, and then I am the wali of the believers, mm -hmm. the mu'min. Then he says, to whomsoever I have been a wali, Ali is a wali. Ali is so a from wali. the beginning to mm -hmm. the end, I'm not just quoting man kuntum mawla, yeah. fahada, ali mawla. Mm -hmm. I'm quoting the whole lot. Mm -hmm. Don't just bring out one little bit yeah. of that yeah. narration. Bring the whole lot there mm -hmm. so everybody can see the context mm -hmm. of what is going on here? Yeah. So when you have the Quran and Ahlul Bayt together, when I think of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam, mm. I think Prophet Muhammad was walking, talking Quran. Absolutely. He was the Quran. When we say, uh, you know, as Muslims, when we speak of the Quran, we're speaking Prophet Muhammad here yeah. because he brought that. Mm. So when a person is placed with the Quran, we're saying, who is it that came? Who is it that's been left as the walking, talking Quran? Should I say? Much and so sure. when you say Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Through Ghadir, not through anything else, through Ghadir. And then you think of after that, you think of Imam Ali al Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then speaks about Imam Ali al -Islam. So he tells you who the first one is in that tradition. He's there telling you. So uh, Allah is my, uh, he's an authority for all of us. Then yeah. he's gonna, he says about his own authority. Then he mm. speaks about Imam Ali as authority. So that it is my itself. If a person tries to misinterpret that and say that it means just to treat the Ahlul Bayt well. Yeah. Well, hang on a minute. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in Sunan al-Qubra, he mm -hmm. says, Fanzur kayfa fihima. 
Watch how you treat these two Absolutely. after me. Not Absolutely. just treat the Ahlul Bayt, treat yeah. these two after mm -hmm. me. Yeah, no. so sister, over here we come to another very important difference between the Shias and the Sunnis, which is that our Sunni uh, brothers say that uh, we have the Hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, which is, I leave behind the Quran and the Alibet, I leave behind the Quran and the Sunnah, and I leave behind the Quran and the Sahaba. So from your book, you know, what you've written, but what would you like to say about this issue? Well, there's a book, there's a section in my book, mm -hmm. and it's called The Fundamental Instruction mm -hmm. Left by the Prophet. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at all these, when I, when I was researching into it myself, mm -hmm. obviously in the Mu'atta Yama Malik, it mentions the, the, the book and the sunnah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but the thing is, when you say the book and the sunnah, and I think of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Arafat, because that's where a lot of people state that this was mentioned, mm -hmm. in, and then... If that, if that is the case, then and then at the same time you have a narration by Jabir ibn Abdullah mm -hmm. to state that the Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him stated and my, and my ahlul bayt rather yeah. than the sunnah. Yeah. Then to me, when I'm thinking of of this and I'm thinking of Prophet Muhammad stood there in mm -hmm. front of the people mm -hmm. and he's telling the people that there's something here that you need to attach to. If yeah. I'm a convert, this is mm -hmm. what I've written in my book. Mm -hmm. If I'm somebody who's come new to Islam who doesn't know anything about Quran, yeah. nothing about the sunnah, mm -hmm. and then I'm thinking. Ya Rasulallah, what, who am I to go to? Say yeah. if somebody says yeah. to you, Quran and Sunnah, who do I go to? Mm -hmm. So then, so, does Rasulallah answer? And then I said, I've seen an answer. He says, Ahlul Bayt. And then I tried to search and tried yeah. to search whether Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Arafat or at Ghadir, mm -hmm. did he mention the Quran and the companions? Yeah. And I've not seen that. He didn't mention, follow the Quran and follow the companions. He never said the Quran and the companions together. And the Sahaba, to me, obviously then, I've gone into the Sahaba then because after that, that's the next question that follows on. So that's when I've gone right, right into the Sahaba then to speak about what is the difference and how my knowledge you know, grew on yeah. in regards to the Sahaba. Mashallah. And you've mentioned, I'd just like to show the book if someone just joined us now. We've got Sister Anila with us and she's written this very informative book. Uh, she's joined our religion of Shia Islam. And uh, it's called The Succession of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we are discussing the things that she's written about. So, mashallah, sister. Now, moving on to this um, uh, book, the things that you've mentioned in the book. You've also mentioned about the Sahabas. And uh, I would just like to say, first of all, that we, as uh, Shia Muslim, we all love the Sahabas. It's not that we only love the Alibeth. We've just got this image that we only love the Alibeth. And we don't love the Sahabas. But you've mentioned the Sahabas in your book, mashallah. And um, what would you like to say, you know, about the Sahabas? Do you class them all the same? I mean, that is something that we have said in many programs on this channel, that we don't class all the Sahabas as the same. So how would you like to explain this from your book to the viewers so they can understand a lot better? Well, first things first for me is always mm -hmm. Quran. Mm -hmm. I always think Quran first. Mm -hmm. And in Surah at tawbah which is one of the it is one of the last chapters revealed of the Quran, yeah. Surah at tawbah verse 100, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَابِقُونَ أَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُهُ بِإِحْسَانِ رَزِئَ اللَّا أَنْهُ وَرَذُؤًا Now, Ahlul Sunnah, mm -hmm. obviously they're my brothers and sisters, yeah. when this is quoted, Everybody seems to think, yeah, oh, okay, Razi Allah Anhu upon mm -hmm. the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is saying, Wasabikuna Avaluna min al Muhajirin, those who proceeded in faith from amongst the Muhajirin mm -hmm. and the Ansar, Allah was pleased with them. Mm -hmm. Allah was Nashla. pleased with, mm -hmm. and, and those who fo followed them in what was good, Allah yeah. was pleased with them as they uh, as they are with him. Mm -hmm. So Allah is not putting al Allah doesn't say Wasabikuna Avaluna al Muhajirin. Al Ansar. He yeah. said, Min al Muhajirin. Mm. Well, Ansar. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not specifying everybody the same. Mm -hmm. He's not specifying everybody be, to be yeah. part of this verse. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, in Sahih Bukhari, Kitab al Rikak, mm -hmm. which means to make the heart tender. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. This. Um, there are many traditions in Bukhari, which mm. I always, always never yeah. see anybody That tells us that we can't class all the Sahabas yeah. as the same. Because mm -hmm. on the Day of Judgment, some 
people are going to come towards Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. and they're going to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is going to recognize who these people are, yeah. and they're going to there's going to be a barrier placed in between that Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. and these people, mm -hmm. and then Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's going to say, Ya Rabb Ashabi, O Lord, mm -hmm. my Ashab, mm -hmm. and then Allah subhanahu wa taala is going to turn around and say, you know, um, you know, you do not know. You do not know what these people yeah. have done after you. You do not know what they have done after mm -hmm. you. Then mm -hmm. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to say, Suhkan, Suhkan, Liman mm -hmm. You know, Badi. Uh, far removed, far removed are those people who changed, Ghair changed, so other than after me. Mm -hmm. um, and this is. Ve this is coincides with the Sahaba. Yeah. The word is Ashabi mm -hmm. in there. And there's another tradition. Uh, by Jabari ibn Abdullah al Ansari, mm. where I think this was in the case of the Ghazwa Bani Mustalik, mm. where the Sahabi Ansar and Mahajirun started, there was some sort of, I don't know what it was, scuffle or something yeah. between them, mm. and someone kicked, the uh, Mahajirun kicked an Ansar. Right. Yeah. And in, in that, it was Abdullah ibn Ubay, and mm. he was stood there and he said, Well, let us get back to Medina and the you know the mightier will expel the mm -hmm. one that's mean something like that in in, in the tradition. No, and okay. then um, Hazrat Umar he gets angry and he mm -hmm. states, uh, "Let me chop the head off this hypocrite." Right. Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad turns around and states, "No, he he doesn't want him doing that." And he says, "For people are going to state that Muhammad kills his companions." So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is quoting this word okay. "companion" in relation to a known hypocrite who is Abdullah ibn Ubay. Mm -hmm. So he is a known, he's an Ashab, but he's a hypocrite, mm -hmm. and he's a known hypocrite. So th there are Ashab, there are verses in the Quran, we have Surah Munafiqun in the Quran, mm -hmm. you know, and so we don't... Class them all the yeah, same. Yeah, we don't, we yeah. cannot class we can't everybody class all the, yeah. the same, because mm -hmm. he is an Ashab, so yeah. he's not Absolutely. the same as mm -hmm. a person who, we don't, I mean, in we have to take everything in context, Context, yeah, it. absolutely. Because when Rasulullah sallallahu says, "Do not make my companions a target," yeah, well, we don't make the companions a target. The ones that when he's talking, he is talk not talking um, generally yeah, to everyone. General, he's talking yeah. here specifically, and mm -hmm. we don't deny that. We, you cannot deny that. But when the mm -hmm. Quran speaking, the Quran's telling me not everybody's the same. Yeah. The Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mm -hmm. are telling me not everybody's the same. Some people were pushed away from Prophet Muhammad. Then why should I? carry on saying mm. that I have to follow all the Sahaba and, and all the Sahaba will grant me paradise because absolutely. I, don't, I cannot absolutely. Um, follow that yeah. anymore. No, absolutely, yeah. sister. I'll just show the uh, viewers the book once again by uh, our sister Anila Sultan. So everything that sister Anila is uh, mentioning over here today, mashallah, is all mentioned in the book and all the uh, traditions and all the information is in the book. And you can relate to that in the book, inshallah. Okay, sister, let's move on to um, another very important uh, thing uh, in the religion of uh, Shia Islam, which is the uh, Hadith Kissa. So we all believe in the Hadith Kissa, but how, uh, what's the difference between the Shia uh, way of thinking of Hadith Kissa and the uh, Sunni way of thinking of the Hadith Kissa, which you've mentioned in your book? Well, the Sunnis, they believe in the wives of the Prophet being included, mm -hmm. whereas the Shia do not believe that the wives of the Prophet are included. Okay. And then, you know, obviously they use the, ver the, the word used is stay in your houses, which is buyuti kunna. Mm -hmm. Then when the verse of purification mm -hmm. is addressed, the innama yuridu lali huziba an kumar rijsa ahlul bayt, the, the, the word ahlul bayt yeah. is just one house. Mm -hmm is mentioned and the address is changed from uh, predominantly female to Absolutely. predominantly yeah. masculine. Yeah. So it's, it's not yutahira kunna, it's yutahira kum. Mm, sure. uh, mm -hmm. And not an kunna, it's an kum in, yeah. the, in, in the actual verse. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that reason, the Shia say that the wives are not included. Mm -hmm. But to me, I can't just take the Quran alone. And like you speak about Ahlul Bayt, and you yeah. take from Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. But because my initial thinking was to go into the mm -hmm. Sahih Sitta, yeah. I went into Sahih Sitta mm -hmm. and Sahih Muslim, with the traditions yeah. in here anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sahih Muslim, mm -hmm. there's a tradition to do, Bibi Aisha narrates it. Mm -hmm. um, and she says that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he goes outside and he takes.
uh, a, cl a well, cloak which is made of black camel mm -hmm. hair. Yeah. And he goes out with this cloak and then he calls Ali Fatima, Bibi Fatima, Hassan and Hussein Islam, calls these and he puts them under the cloak. Then he recites in the Mahdi, the Lalu, Absolutely. The Lalu, the So when there are certain people out, out there who are mm. stating that this verse was revealed in the house of yeah. mm -hmm. the wives of the Prophet, whereas Bibi Aisha in Sahih Muslim is stating that Prophet Muhammad walks out, goes outside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He goes outside and he's, he's then reciting this verse when this is showing to me mm -hmm. that it is not in the house yeah. of wives of the Prophet, it can be, it is outside. Mm -hmm. Then it, there's another tradition in Sahih Muslim, uh, which is narrated by Umar ibn Ab, uh, Umm Salama, yeah. the, the son mm -hmm. of Umm Salama, mm -hmm. and this is actually in her house. But, you know, the, the verse is revealed, then he brings them and he recites this verse. Mm -hmm. So obviously, then this other, in Sahih Tirmidhi, there's narrations to say that this happened, it was, it was happening consecutively. It yeah. was happening in Mahdi. Six months the Prophet was saying this, mm -hmm. and then he was knocking on the door of Bibi Fatima the Zahra, Islam's house, and he was saying it on the door. So he wasn't knocking on the door of any wife of the Prophet and saying it. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, this is. This is in my book, it's in Mashallah. the book. Mashallah. It's in there. So all the yeah. uh, information is it's in your in book there, and yeah. the viewers can inshallah get this book. My and biggest they can read authority the book. Yeah. Say was mm. at the time being mm. a, uh, being a, uh, a Sunni mm -hmm. and looking into it and looking at the Sayyid Sitta yeah. and then when somebody goes and narrates something which is not part of the Sayyid Sitta mm. or whether it's part of there is a narration to say that I think it's in De one of Delami's books mm -hmm. to say that the Prophet Muhammad said it was Umar and the household of Umar. It was uh, Usman and the household of Usman. Right. It was Abu Bakr and the mm -hmm. house of... Um, Abu Bakr or something. Yeah. I think, or, or no, it's, it, sorry, that's that's wrong. It's to do with, um, he says that Abu Bakr, Umar, and um, Usman are the household of God. But right. whereas in my eyes, mm -hmm. that is uh, not even in the say sit that, it's yeah. further away. And mm -hmm. the thing is, since in my heart, since when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a household? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So I don't, I don't agree to that. And it's only one narration that I've, uh, I that came across into my. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so yeah, sister, uh, I think we just got a caller. We'll just take a call. Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Hello. Hello, Salaam Alaikum, sister. Uh, Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Yeah, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Uh, my name is Sabia Shah. I'm calling from London. Uh, yes, sister, uh, what would you like to say? I uh, just want to speak to Sister Anila. Yes, uh, you're welcome to the program, Sister. Uh, yes, Thank please you. go ahead. Hello, Anila. Sabia here. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm okay, alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm fine. Just wanted to say I'm really, really proud of you <laughs> for what you've done. You've really helped me. You've always been there for me. And I've got a copy of your book, and I have given it to my friends as well. So they're, they are reading it, and the whole family is watching you. I really support you and uh, really, really uh, well done and good luck. And uh, is that Allah be your kamyabi there. That's my We are all behind you. We all support you. And uh, mashallah, it's lovely to see you on the television. Thank <laughs> I'm you, watching you. All our duas are with you. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much for your call, mashallah. That was very encouraging of you to call. Thank you. Uh, because Sister Neela, it's first time she's come on the TV, and mashallah, she's come, and uh, we're very grateful to her for coming today, and thank you for your inc encouraging words once again. So, viewers uh, who are watching the program, mashallah, we've got Sister uh, Anila Sultan with us today. She's written this book. It's called The Succession of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, I would like all the callers to call in if they've got any questions, or if you would like to give any comments, mashallah, then they can call in. Okay, so let's move on to um, something else that you've mentioned in the book, which is uh, the word Shia. Now, um, I think uh, a lot of time our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters ponder about this word, you know, where it's been mentioned in the Quran, mm -hmm. and when did this word actually come into existence. You know, they always think, well, Shia, what, what does it mean? And, you know, there's so many things on their mind, you know, about this word. So would you like to tell the viewers what you've mentioned in your book about this word, the Shia, and also the word of Sunni, you know, what would you like to say about that? Well, uh, 
Uh, sister, I would just like to stop you there for a minute, please. And uh, we've just got another caller with us. Okay. Uh, hello, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam, brother uh, Muhammad Ali from Birmingham. Uh, I'm really touched and uh, uh, by the sister's uh, progression uh, to discovery and uh, finding the true faith. I think for children here in this country, it's extremely difficult and it does require persistence and negotiating the maze uh, which uh, there's so many distractions, etc. And uh, really all credit to the sister for persistence in trying to find uh, a, a narrow way. It is very logical and it is very open, but you've got to open your mind and you've got to open your heart, and that's what the sister's done. Marshall. And I'd be interested to find out uh, what specific thing that uh, uh, turned her or persuaded her that she has to leave the old ways or so, and is she bitter about what she has been taught and how has she been able to negotiate that transition with her family so that so that the other people who may be in similar sort of uh, phase have some common kind of encouragement or a guidance as to how to go about it okay brother thank you so much for your call mashallah um I would like to ask the sister, yeah, what we should, just briefly, if you would like to say anything to the brother, any, anything you would like to say? Uh, to do with bitterness, I'm not bitter at all because I mm -hmm. believe Sunni, my Sunni brethren, mm -hmm. they don't know um, and I don't believe that you can't target them like as though they know everything Yeah. and mm -hmm. to approach to approach them, you have to have a certain way of approach. Sometimes silence is better than they come to you themselves and ask you, because that has happened to me. And, and the major moving, major point that moved me mm -hmm. towards the Ahlul Bayt, like I said, was the Ghadir, and then the traditions that basically con contradicted mm -hmm. the Ahlul yeah, Bayt, absolutely. that then deci I deciphered for myself mm -hmm. and knocked them out of my, uh, through Quran, yeah. I'd say, mm -hmm. and my book does go into that in quite some Mashallah. detail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So, sister in law, yeah, we we're saying about uh, the word of Shia and the Sunni, you know, uh, because a lot of people think about this word Shia, how did it come into existence? Was it after Imam Ali al Islam? Was it before him, uh, the Holy Prophet? Was it at, at his time, or was it well before that? What would you like to say about the Shia and the Sunni words? Well, in my understanding, like uh, I said... So I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I'll just have to stop you okay. once again, mashallah. Uh, we've taken calls now, and we've just got another call now. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. It's Hamera, um, Anila's an sister. Uh, mashallah, sister. Thank you for calling. Uh, yes. Um, uh, what would you like to say, sister? Yeah? I'd just like to say about the book, the Succession of the Prophet. I mean, yeah. it's a really good book to learn about, you know, the most controversial topics usually mm -hmm. discussed within other schools of thought regarding the Shia belief. Yeah. Because what I, I've used to be a Sunni myself, and now I'm a follower of the Ahlul Bayt, and I've come to know that there's a lot of um, propaganda, propaganda against the Shia, mm -hmm. and that this book, it contains like certain, you know, Quranic ayats, and majority the Sunni are Hadith to support the various topics, such as Imam al Ghadi's successorship, and, and also how the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, are most mm -hmm. highly ranked compared to others. Absolutely. And uh, I just, you know, I want to say well done to my sister because it uses logic and deep analysis. So it can't really offend any other schools of thought because it's, it's, it's the way that she's, you know, she's brought across to people um, through her logic and reasoning, um, you know, behind the Shia beliefs at the end of the day. And I just want to say, you know, well done, Anila. You know, you've done, mashallah, brilliantly. And it's, it's, you know, it gives an insight to the Shia belief, to many, and inshallah, I hope a lot of people do change through your book. Inshallah, sister, mashallah, I've read the book myself, and uh, even though I've read so many books during my life, and uh, during I was a little kid, you know, I've read so many books, but that is another very, very uh, interesting book, mashallah, I've learned so much from that as well. Uh, so, we was once again, if someone wants to Urdu, then please call me ring or talk to my sister in Allah. And I would just like to say, sister, that everyone's mentioned that you've come on today. And uh, I would just like to say that uh, having a channel like Alibaba TV, I think that's something that we can 
uh, come and uh, is a very uh, big platform for us to actually come on and uh, for yourself, for example, or for myself to come on and do programs like this. What would you like to just quickly say about the TV? I just say Alhamdulillah for it. Mashallah. As soon as my book come that comes mm. out, this is what I found quite a miracle, really. Yeah. That when my book comes out, Shia channel comes out, there are three now, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Mashallah. Um, and the word Ahlul Bayt is on that screen. Absolutely. But that word Ahlul Bayt, so many people now know the word Ahlul Bayt. Absolutely. That we never. Yeah, so let's take another call, call yeah. sister. We got just another caller. Hello, Salam alaikum. Um, wa alaikum salam. Um, I'm Muhammad Dabas calling from Sheffield. Yes, Beta. What would you like to say? And I was um, really interested about our guest talking about the new book based on the succession of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and. I really liked it because it's got some re really valid topics. Mm -hmm. And but I have got one question to our guest: that what um, what was the reason that she changed the faith from a Sunni Islamic faith to a Shia Muslim? Okay, better. Th uh, thank you for your call. Uh, yes, I think sister you've so mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, mashallah. And um, would you just like to say anything else about that, or should we just move on to the next question? No, I think the book will tell you. Yeah, you inshallah. Just one, yeah, one part yeah. Is, is a lot. Yeah. So, better. Uh, thank you for calling. Uh, I think uh, if you get this book and uh, if you read the book, then we can learn a lot more about it. Inshallah, what sister said about the book. Inshallah. Okay, so let's uh, move on to that question we were saying about the word of Shia and the Sunni, mashallah. Um, well. Again, the Qur'an, mm -hmm. um, I know that the word Shia has been mentioned in the Qur'an, I know the word Ahlul Bayt has been mentioned in mm -hmm. the Qur'an, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the word Ahlul Sunnah in the Qur'an, right. I haven't seen the word Sunni in the mm -hmm. Qur'an. I know the word Sunni comes from the word Sunnah, yeah. but the word Sunni isn't in the Qur'an, and okay. both Shias and Sunnis believe in Sunnah. So we don't we don't reject Sunnah, mm -hmm. nobody rejects Sunnah. We know that Allah SWT mentions in the Qur'an, that the word Sunnah is there. Yeah, you know? so I'll just take another call, then we con okay. we'll continue from there. As-salamu alaykum. Hello, as-salamu alaykum. Uh, wa alaykum as brother. What's your name and where are you calling me from? Uh, brother Glenn, this is Hashim, brother Ghadi. Uh, thank you, brother, for calling. Uh, uh, I would just like to welcome uh, Sister Nira Sultan on on uh, Arabic TV. Mm -hmm. It was a great honor and pleasure for us to welcome her. I just called to um, give my compliments and my welcome to Sister Nila on the TV as uh, so many viewers, so many uh, people don't know, probably they don't know um, what's inside the book and uh, probably Sister Nila's face is very new. Today's her debut on the, on the media. Alibet TV has a pleasure and honor to have her on uh, on screen for the first time on uh, uh, Sister uh, on TV program. But I would like to say every anyone who can, the age, the sex, the background, the uh, education, the qualification, they have no restrictions for you if you are interested in Islam. If you are uh, thinking to learn the real Islam, the real light of Absolutely. Islam, Absolutely. No, then nothing can stop you doing that like Sister Nila. She is mashallah scientist, educated, educated, qualified lady, working mashallah and uh, yet owing all the facts she she has done a very extraordinary job. I just like to congratulate on her book and uh, appearance on the T V. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. thank you Molna Hashim. So this was uh, our um big star of the T V uh, and he's a very, very good example. Just like yourself sister mashallah he's a very young person only uh, in his young 20s, but Marshall is doing a great job for the channel himself. So, this was our guest. My, whenever anybody says the word Shia, mm -hmm. first thing he thinks of is Firqa. But the thing is, the word Firqa is mm -hmm. different to the word Shia. Yeah. The, in the Quran, Allah says, Minal uh, Farak mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Shia, and there's Surah the Rum, verse 32. Everybody mm -hmm. quotes this verse. Yeah. But the word Firqa there, speaking about Firqa, then the word Shia. So he says that th those who uh, divide and then become Shia or 
become Shia meaning become followers of that division mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks against them but in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 37 verse 83 surah al safat mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam a Shia he calls him a Shia of Nuh alayhi salam because mm -hmm. Allah says salam salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen innahu kazalika najil mu'sineen wa innahu ibadin al mu'mineen thumma akhrakhna al arifleen wa inna min shi'atihi la Ibrahim he speaks about Nuh alayhi salam then he goes on and says and Ibrahim uh, was a